it once occurred to a certain czar that if i always know the right time to begin everything if i know who are the right people to listen to and whom to avoid and above all if i always know what is the most important thing to do i would never fail in anything i might undertake this thought having occurred to him he proclaimed it throughout his kingdom that he will give a great reward to anyone who will teach him what is the right time for every action and who are the most necessary people and learned men came to the czar but they all answered his questions differently in reply to the first question some said honorable king in my opinion to know the right time for every action one must draw up in advance a table of days months and years and must live strictly according to it only thus can everything be done at its proper time others declared honorable king in my point of view it is impossible to decide beforehand the right time for every action but that not letting oneself be absorbed in idle pastimes one shall always attend to all that is going on and then do what is most needful <gasps> others again said respected king i am sorry to say that However attentive you may be to what is going on it is impossible for one man to decide correctly the right time for every action but that you should have a council of wise men who will help you to fix the proper time for everything But then again others said Honorable king in my perception there are some things which cannot wait to be laid before a council but about which one has at once to decide whether to undertake them or not but in order to decide that one must know beforehand what is going to happen it is only magicians who know that and therefore in order to know the right time for every action one must consult magicians equally various were the answers to the second question some said honorable king i think the people you most needed are your counselors no Honorable king I think the priests are the most necessary no honorable king the doctors are the most necessary why some said the warriors were the most necessary to the third question as to what is the most important occupation some replied the most important thing in the world is science others said it is skill in warfare it is religious worship all the answers being different I agree with none of you and give the reward to none. But still he is wishing to find the right answers to his questions. Rather I consult a hermit who is widely renowned for his wisdom. The hermit lived in a wood which he never quitted and he received none but common folk. So the Tsar put on simple clothes and before reaching the hermit cell dismounted from his horse and leaving his bodyguard behind went on alone When the Tsar approached the hermit was digging the ground in front of his hut Seeing the Tsar hermit greeted him Welcome respected king and went on digging The hermit was frail and weak and each time he stuck his spade into the ground and turned a little earth he breathed heavily The Tsar went up to him and said I have come to you wise hermit to ask you to answer three questions how can I learn to do the right thing at the right time Who are the people I most need and to whom should I therefore pay more attention than to the rest and what affairs are the most important and need my first attention the hermit listened to the tsar but answered nothing and recommenced digging you are tired let me take the spade and work a while for you thank you giving the spade to the tsar he sat down on the ground when he had dug to beds The Tsar stopped and repeated his questions. I came to you, wise man, for an answer to my questions. If you can give me none, tell me so, and I will return home. 
Here comes someone running. Let us see who it is. The Tsar turned round and saw a bearded man come running out of the wood. The man held his hands pressed against his stomach and blood was flowing from under them. When he reached the Tsar, he fell fainting on the ground moaning feebly. There was a large wound in his stomach. The Tsar washed it as best he could and bandaged it with his handkerchief and with a towel the hermit had. But the blood would not stop flowing and the Tsar again and again removed the bandage soaked with warm blood and washed and rebandaged the wound. When at last the blood ceased flowing, the man revived and asked, Give me something to drink. The Tsar brought fresh water and gave it to him. Meanwhile the sun had set and it had become cool. So the Tsar, with the hermit's help, carried the wounded man into the hut and laid him on the bed. Lying on the bed the man closed his eyes and was quiet. But the Tsar was so tired with his walk and with the work he had done, that he crouched down on the threshold and also fell asleep so soundly that he slept all through the short summer night. When he awoke in the morning, it was long before he could remember where he was or who was the strange bearded man lying on the bed and gazing intently at him with shining eyes. Please forgive me, honorable king. I do not know you and have nothing to forgive you for. Bruh. You do not know me, but I know you. I am that enemy of yours who swore to revenge himself on you because you executed his brother and seized his property. I knew you had gone alone to see the hermit and I resolved to kill you on your way back. But the day passed and you did not return. So I came out from my ambush to find you and I came upon your bodyguard and they recognized me and wounded me. I escaped from them but should have bled to death had you not took care of me. I wished to kill you and you have saved my life. Now if I live and if you wish it, I will serve you as your most faithful slave and will bid my sons do the same. Forgive me. The Tsar was very glad to have made peace with his enemy so easily and to have gained him for a friend and he not only forgave him but said I will send my servants and my own physician to attend you and promised to restore your property. Having taken leave of the wounded man, the Tsar went out into the porch and looked around for the hermit. Before going away, he wished once more to beg an answer to the questions he had put. The hermit was outside, on his knees, sowing seeds in the beds that had been dug the day before. The Tsar approached him and said, For the last time, I pray you to answer my questions, wise man. You have already been answered. How answered? What do you mean? Do you not see, if you had not beaten my weakness yesterday, and had not dug those bats for me, but had gone your way, that man would have attacked you, and you would have repented of not having stayed with me. So the most important time was when you were digging the bats, and I was the most important man, and to do me good was your most important business. Afterwards, when that man ran to us, the most important time was when you were attending to him. For if you had not bound up his wounds, he would have died without having made peace with you. So he was the most important man, and what you did for him was your most important business. Remember then there is only one time that is important. Now it is the most important time because it is the only time when we have any power. The most necessary man is he with whom you are. For no man knows whether he will ever have dealings with anyone else. And the most important affair is to do him good. Because for that purpose alone was men sent into this life.